Hi, this is Brian Lagunas. In this short screencast, I want to introduce you to WPF events. Events in WPF are considerably different from those in Windows Forms. Most events in WPF are referred to as routed events. Routed events are events that can invoke handlers on multiple listeners in an element tree, rather than just on the object that raised the event. To explain further, consider a user interface that consists of a top-level window object which contains a grid object, which may also contain several controls, one of which may be a stack panel that has several radio button objects. If the user was to click on one of the radio buttons in the stack panel, that event could be raised by the radio button, the stack panel, the grid, or the window. As the developer, you can decide where and how the event is handled. There are three types of routed events in WPF. Direct events, which are similar to ordinary .NET events. These are events that are raised by the element in which the event originated and don't pass to any other. For example, the mouse enter is a direct event. If the mouse enters the radio button, only the radio button will raise the mouse enter event. It is not passed up the visual tree. Bubbling events begins with the element where the event originated. It then travels up the containment hierarchy up to the topmost element in the visual tree. For example, mouse down is a bubbling event. It is first raised by the element that is clicked, in this case, a radial button. Next, it is raised by that element's parent, and then by that element's parent, and so on until WPF reaches the top of the element tree. Let's look at an example. In this scenario, I want to handle the mouse down event. Any time any element in my visual tree is clicked, I want something to happen. I want some code to execute. Now, I don't want to create an event handler for every single element in this tree. Now that we understand that bubbling events climb up the visual tree from the element in which it originated to the topmost parent, I can declare the mouse down event handler on the window level. So let's do that. We'll declare mouse down. This ensures that any child element of this window that receives a mouse down event will be handled with this single event handler. In my example, I'm just going to output to the uh, output window the source of the mouse down event. clear out my output window and pull it up so everyone can see. So the expected behavior is if I click in this rectangle I should see that the rectangle executed the mouse down event. And it did. Same thing for text block, border, and the window itself. Now remember what's happening here. When I click on this rectangle, the mouse down event goes to the stack panel. Well, it originates from the rectangle, climbs up the visual tree to the stack panel, then the grid, and then the window. And it is at this point in time in which the window handles the mouse down event. Tunneling events begins with the topmost container in the visual tree. It then travels down the containment hierarchy until it reaches the element where the event originated. For example, the preview mouse down allows you to intercept a mouse down event, first at the window level, and then in increasingly more specific containers until you reach the element that it, the event originated from, in this case, a radio button. By convention, telling events are prefixed with preview. This helps identify telling events from bubbling events. It is not surprising that bubbling events and tunneling events go hand in hand, and often a bubbling event will have a corresponding tunneling event. Let's look at another example. We're going to build off the last scenario we had with the mouse down bubbling event. We're going to assume that we have a new requirement that 
just before the mouse down event is raised, we need to execute some code. Something needs to happen just before the mouse down code is raised. To meet that requirement, we're going to use a tunneling event. And based off convention, I know that the corresponding tunneling event to the mouse down bubbling event is the preview mouse down. So let's declare an event handler for the preview mouse down event. Now in this example, I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out to the output window the same thing that we have for the mouse down. It's just this element raised the preview mouse down event. So let's run this and see it in action. So the expected behavior in this scenario is when I click this green rectangle the rectangle should first raise the preview mouse down event and then the corresponding mouse down bubbling event will occur. And that's exactly what happened. Same thing for our border and our text plot. Now remember, remember what's going on here. When I handle this preview mouse down event, it first starts at the window level and it works its way down my visual tree until it reaches the event in which it originated, which in this case was a green rectangle. All routed events include an instance of the routed event args class or a class that inherits from routed event args. The routed event args class contains information about the event and its source element. The source property indicates what object raised the event. The original source indicates what object originally raised the event. Usually the original source is the same as the source, but in some cases they could be different. For example, if you click close to the border of a window, you will get a window object for the source, but a border object for the original source. The routed event provides the routed event object for the event triggered by your event handler. The handled property allows you to halt the event bubbling or tunneling process. If handled on a bubbling event, the event will no longer continue up the containment hierarchy. The same goes for a tunneling event. If handled, the event will no longer continue down the containment hierarchy, and it also prevents the corresponding bubbling event from ever being raised. In this example, we have a new requirement. The requirement says that if you don't like to fish, you can't click on that green rectangle. To support this requirement, we're going to add some code to our preview mouse down event handler. First, I'm going to add a simple variable called likes to fish. And I'm going to set it to false. I'm going to say I don't like to fish. Now remember, the requirement said if the source is the rectangle and you don't like to fish, then the code in the mouse down bubbling event should not execute. In order to do that, we had to prevent the mouse down bubbling event from ever being raised in the first place. And to do that, we set the handled property of the routed event args to true. Let's run this. So now the expected behavior is if I click on the border, I should still receive the preview mouse down and mouse down event code which is the case. Same thing for the text block and the window. But remember, I don't like to fish. And my requirement says if I don't like to fish, then the code of the mouse down event handler should not execute on the rectangle. So I'm going to click the rectangle. And as you can see, 
it worked as expected. Only the preview mouse down event handler was executed. And that's because we set the handled property to true. We're saying we have handled this event and by doing that we have halted the process and the corresponding bubbling event was never raised. There may be a scenario in which an element needs to receive an event that has previously been handled. Luckily, WPF provides a mechanism to accomplish just this task. By using the UIElement.addHandler method, you can add a routed event handler for a specified routed event. You can also specify if the handler should be invoked for a routed event that has already been marked as handled by another element along the event route. Thanks for listening to this screencast on WPF events. For more in-depth online WPF training, please check out Pluralsight On Demand at Pluralsight.com.